Hello everyone and welcome to the 60X Business Show. My name is Christian Kitumaini and together with my guests we have different conversations about business, entrepreneurship and life. This is the show you've been waiting for. Stay tuned. In today's conversation, I have an amazing entrepreneur. He's the CEO and founder of um, Exus Limited, which is a fintech company here in Rwanda. They do have different products, including um, Save app, which is um, a digital wallet that enable um, different um, saving schemes and also Save Plus, which is a crowdfunding platform. In this the studio, he's now then Steve Schema. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you today? Good, good. It's, it's, a, been, it's been a long week, but I've come to, to an end, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time I wanted to have you on the show, and <laughs> finally we made it today. Yeah, finally. Well, I, t I t told you I'm a shy person. Many people don't believe me, but uh, I think I am, to some um, extent. We'll try to make um, the conversation <laughs> more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I, but I'll get comfortable as time goes, yeah. Wonderful. So um, on the 60X, we'll be spinning the wheel, mm -hmm. and um, randomly we'll select a number, and from there I'll ask you a question. Are you ready? Sure. So should I do I spin? Just spin. What's your lucky number? Uh, let's see. Let's okay. See. What's gonna be your not lucky number? Let's see. It's, it's gonna be a, a, a Today, what is what is that? Let's, you start with eight. That's in between eight and nine. I think that's very oh, that's an closer, eight. Yeah, yeah. closer closer to eight. That's an eight, yeah. Wonderful. Can you tell us um, more about Exus, um, what is, mm -hmm. how did the idea came to life and uh, why the focus on, on fintech? Uh, well, I mean, Exus started in 2014 mm. and uh, that was, uh, I guess, one year or oh, that was the same year I sort of had graduated from uni. Mm. And, uh, but before that I was working with, uh, for another, um, it's a consultancy firm because mm. my background is in geography, okay. so geographic information system, remote sensing, so that's what I did at uni. Um, so I was working, I worked for that you know, firm for a couple of months, and then I decided to go entrepreneur. So that was in 2014, and um, the initial project is not what I'm doing now, mm. surprisingly. Because mm. initially we had a project, uh, the product we were working on, it was a product to to digitalize the land taxation system. Mm. So that's what we started with. Um, so 2014, because uh, the company got registered in July 2014, so we had to put up uh, an MVP, which we, we had by early 2015. Mm. And so after that, that's when you go pitch. Yeah. So we went out pitching, looking for money, and main didn't work. Okay. So it failed, um, I, I used all my money because I had to, to look for a software engineer to help because I knew what I wanted, mm -hmm. the product, the design, all that kind of stuff. But then I needed somebody to write the codes for me. So mm -hmm. I hired a guy so who I was paying at the time. So I was doing some private consultancy gigs, which then I'd get paid and then the money would be channeled <laughs> back into the my, you know, the business. And with the hope because, I mean, the numbers, everything looked so good, you know, when you've watched all these YouTube videos and mm. feel like if the idea is great and you've got an MVP, then that's it. Mm. So that's a $1 million idea. Mm. Yeah, but that didn't work. So 2015, the whole of it, actually, up until probably July. Mm. So I was looking for pitching. I, I, I knocked on every door that I could get to. It didn't work. So now towards the end of 2015, mm. I got another private consultancy gig, yeah, yeah. which was, um, I think at the time, uh, an organization called Access to Finance Rwanda mm. and, and Ministry of Finance. Mm. I think at the time they were um, trying to map all savings groups, so informal savings schemes mm. across the country. So they wanted to know who was doing what, how many groups were there, who they were working with. So they, they had me to do that. Mm. So I was supposed to work with uh, both local and international NGOs that were working with those groups. Mm. 
So that's how I got to know. I was introduced to seven scripts. I only knew Ibimina or the typical urban, you know, merry-go-round type of schemes. I didn't know the seven scripts, also known as village savings loans associations. Yeah. So that's when I know. I mean, I, I came to to sort of know those groups, and they were fascinating, very fascinating in terms of the impact aspect of it, but the business potential mm -hmm. aspect of it. Because I think at a time um, back in 2014, we had. So I was supposed to look at how many groups we have across mm -hmm. the country. So you're looking at probably more than uh, what? Um, more than. 15,000 groups, yeah. so that was a lot of, um, too many groups, and then they were sort of serving over 700 plus people, 700,000. Mm. And these are groups that are serving, what, 200 per week, run in France, you know, and now you see how this changes, you know, it changes their lives, because they, they serve in a group of 25 to 30 people, mm. and then after that, they give, uh, they do internal lending, mm. Uh, meaning uh, if somebody needs a loan, they come in, in front of the members, they pitch their idea, they either get it or the, the request is declined. Mm -hmm. Now, when they get a loan, they have to pay back with interest. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's fascinating because um, one of the stories, I mean, there are plenty of stories, but yeah. some of them is you see somebody who grew from just having 200 or walking barefoot you know, to growing in less than 12 months. They own a small business, they're selling either fruits or tomatoes, mm -hmm. they're paying school fees for their kids. So you see the impact of that, because again, these groups, they targeted a huge majority of women. Mm -hmm. So over 70% of members were women. So they targeted those people. Mm -hmm. And women are fascinating, if you look at them. They have, they, they, cope well with organic growth. Mm -hmm. They're not the kind of people if I saw somewhere 15,000 and I can't afford it, <laughs> I'm gonna want to go for that. Mm -hmm. No, they're not that kind of people. So they would go one step at a time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so they grew, I met a couple of them, and they, sh they told me they never thought, they never believed, you know, that they would afford a loan of 5,000. Mm -hmm. You know, you can believe now. Um, telling me that, uh, then at that moment I thought, how long does it take me to spend 5,000? Mm. So, and then, but then you see, and then she tells you that, actually it's even more than money because now I contributed my household mm. and then um, now I gained that value that I didn't have before. Yeah. So yeah, so that's how I fell in love with that idea. I was like, it has an impact aspect of it, but also a huge um, business potential because the latest data that were published, which we also helped coordinate, was in 2018, mm -hmm. and we're counting 47,000 groups uh, in Rwanda. That's over a million people. Mm -hmm. They had over 36 billion running francs in in uh, savings in a quarter. Mm -hmm. No commercial bank in Rwanda handles that amount of money uh, from a retail perspective. Mm -hmm. So this shows you. So all this money, most of it, probably 80 plus percent it circulates manually, you know, mm. cash, you know, box and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so SEV is meant to really uh, digitize the whole process, but also putting more visibility to these people, you know, because uh, we recently launched a partnership with Access Bank, uh, whereby they'll be gaining 6% interest per annum, wow. which is something they never had before. And so that whatever it is they're doing with SEV creates security, it creates convenience because mm. now transparency, everything that happens in the group, every member have access to it 24 seven. Now when COVID hit, they were not allowed to meet. So mm. those that, that were using SEV, they went on with their operations because they didn't need to meet physically. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's how I started, did SEV and then SEV Plus came later yeah. on. And um, SEV Plus was just, <laughs> As I was telling you, we started working last year around, I think, March or February, mm. and we launched in September. And it came out of just, you know, was with, the, with my team, we're like, yeah, this thing, we can do it. We can do it in a very short period of time. So some of the lessons we learned while building SEV mm. in terms of product design process, so all of those were, were sort of improved. And yeah, we were able to put it up and it seems to be doing well. Not where we want it to be, but so far, so good.
wonderful. What what yeah. a story! <laughs> <laughs> very very fascinating story from mm -hmm. um, even your background, which is not in finance, right? Yep. But through different consulting, mm -hmm. um, you 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 got exposed to the numbers. Yes. You saw the opportunities, and mm -hmm. then you say, "Wow, these yeah. things is feasible. Mm -hmm. um, let's go and and, and 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 do it." And then through trials and errors, um, yeah. you reach where you are today. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be interested to know um, how does Save works for anyone who like to understand or maybe join. How does it work? Uh, it's very simple. So for those that are familiar with um, collective saving schemes, so. We have a USSD app, mm. so this makes it accessible to non-smartphone users or those who don't have access to internet. So which means you've got to belong to a group. So we have, you can either belong to a group through an agent, a network of agents that we have mm. with our partners, NGOs. So when they create a group, so they set up the rules of that group, the name, how much they're gonna be saved and all that kind of stuff. Now from there, you can just access by dialing star mm. 777, hash and then the rest you have the menu so you can save you can provide all contributions you can request a loan so when you request a loan all other committee members because they're committee yeah. members they get an sms that xyz requested for a loan that needs to be paid in this period of time mm. so then they can approve the moment they approve it money moves to your momo wallet or airtel money mm. so that's how it works and then we have a smartphone app for urban people mm. uh, whereby um it's pretty much the same, but the experience is a bit better, you yeah. know, it's a bit better and uh, yeah, we're happy a few, I think a month ago or so, um, to be the first app, at least, you know, made in Rwanda, to have a dark theme. Wow. Yeah, so, well, I would always just, have, you know, something we wanted to do with the guys, you know, okay. you're like, you know, why can't we do it, and, you know. I mean, the crowdfunding platform was at least more or less the first of its kind, mm. so we also did wanted to do the dark thing, which so far people are loving it. During the night especially? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, even during the day, <laughs> oh, almost okay. of my stuff are in dark mode, so mm -hmm. be it on my phone or my laptop, so I like dark mode, so, you know, and, and so people are loving it. So we can access it on iOS mm -hmm. or, or um, Google Play, and then, um, start so it's like creating a whatsapp group you create mm -hmm. a group and then you invite other people they either get an sms or a notification that they've been invited to join a specific group to which they have to consent unlike mm -hmm. whatsapp group because <laughs> <laughs> they have to accept to join yeah. or not yeah. you know they have to they look at whatever it is you're suggesting in terms of um, the rules that are going to um, to govern that mm -hmm. group so if they agree to it, then they can join. If they don't, they decline. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Um, yeah. For some of the viewers, please go and check out um, Save Up and Save Plus, which are fascinating platform that mm -hmm. will enable you to do group saving, get a loan, and um, plan for whatever activity you wanna plan. Mm -hmm. And we've seen in the last couple of months how. Um, impactful Save Plus has, have, have, has been into people's life. Mm -hmm. um, how do you personally feel about the impact that Save Plus is creating within their, the Rwandan community? Um, it's, it's actually fascinating because when we thought about it, when we were in the process of designing it, we wanted to think of something that would be more inclusive. Mm. Yeah, because um, not everybody here has a smartphone or internet. So, and yet, people want to be a part of you know, others, others' lives in, in a positive way. So we're like everybody, almost everybody, with mm -hmm. a phone, they use mobile money. Yeah. So we thought to ourselves, why can't we just create a platform that could be accessed by not just those with internet, but also those with, with you know, just basic phone. So that's why, um, that's one of the features that have been loved, appreciated by many. So whenever you create a cause, it has a till number, a unique mm -hmm. till number. People are already used to Momo Pay, Momo yeah, Code. Yeah. So it's pretty much the same logic. So when you dial it and then you send the money, uh, it goes straight to the cause owner. And you can contribute from 500. You don't need to be a millionaire. Yeah. That has always been uh, my idea. You don't need to be a millionaire to start donating to charity or mm. to support. Yeah, so um, it's been good. Um, when we started, the, tr the, the, the traction was a bit low, mm. but now it's, it's sort of, um, I think when we started, 
people were doing probably less than uh, what than 300,000 per month but now we're doing probably more than 3 million in donations mm -hmm. it's still growing um, the last few months we've already uh, over 23 million have gone wow. through the platform mm -hmm. and there's a lot coming in there's a lot mm -hmm. coming in and people are just we don't have we're not a big company so we don't have a big budget for marketing mm -hmm. But social media, I've been using social media and, and people are just, you know, uh, organically learning about the platform mm. and then using it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So as you've heard from, from Steve there, mm -hmm. um, it's very, very supportive if you have um, specific ideas, you, wanna, mm -hmm. you have a specific cause that you like to um, um, get funding for that. You can, um, the platform is there to help you and is very, very happy and the way that yeah. it's impactful and the way it's picking up and the way even the market is embracing it. And from the numbers that statistically say it's the transaction that's happening, um, mm -hmm. the future is very, very promising. Definitely, I hope so. Let's spin the wheel yeah. for another round of questions. You've got eight, what's going to be your next lucky number? Let's see. <laughs> Which number do you think you can get next? It could be eight again, who knows? We never know, maybe. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be a thirteen. Oh, okay. Uh oh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's in the middle. That's in the middle. Want to spin again? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I hope you not get eight again. Who knows? Maybe. I could be surprised. Yeah. No. So that <laughs> no. gonna be an eight. It's a ten now. It's a ten now. Unless you're progressing. <laughs> you, yeah, you're progressing. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, I would like to know what do you think about the serving culture in Rwanda? Um, are we there yet, or there are some room for improvement? Yeah, obviously there's, there's always room for improvement. Mm. And um, but now on the flip side of it, I always think. Saving culture has always been there. Mm. It's just that the tools are not efficient. You know, mm. they're not convenient or they do not adapt to the actual reality on the ground. But in terms of improvement, there's always room for improvement. So uh, if you look uh, at the numbers that I shared before, in terms of, you know, there are lots of these in form of saving schemes all mm. around because loans are expensive and, and, you know, financial services are not that at least formal financial services are very expensive. Mm. You know, you have places in Rwanda where the nearest SACO is within, what, two to three hour working hours, you know, working distance. Or sometimes it's, uh, they charge them, you know, it, it's mm. really expensive. You need a loan, it can take you up to three months, you know, because you're doing, if you don't have guarantee. So there's got to be a way to think of those people that do not have guarantee, that do not have you know, um, they do not live near a branch or do not have smartphones. Mm. So that's, and then these saving schemes, because if I barely make $1 per day, mm. or I even barely meet all my needs, I can't think of saving. Mm. Yeah, and even if I save, that would be penance in the sense that for it to accumulate, it would yeah. take a very long time. Mm. She so doesn't make sense. But then when they do it collectively, there's the, um, the multiplier effect, mm. which allows them now, and also they keep each other accountable. Mm. And this model has worked for quite some time, you know, not just in Rwanda, but across Africa. So, and I think when designing products or be within the former financial sector, fintech or telcos, they've got to be a way to think, you know, in, along those lines, instead mm. of imposing a specific product because it's what you understand mm. or maybe you've seen it work some other places but approach your market with that sense of empathy mm. try to understand them try to think through what they're, they're I mean they like or what they're accustomed to and, and then maybe twist it a little bit to make it much more functional and much more broader from what they're doing mm. and that's what we're trying to do it's not easy it's, it's not easy because when we started, it wasn't easy to, to convince the telcos. Yeah. It wasn't easy to, it, it has taken us over a year to integrate with the bank. You know, it wasn't easy. So, I mean, that's how, we, that's how it works. That's, you know, what we signed up for. But for me, that's what I think. So the culture of saving has been there. 
but done it a little bit differently than mm. what we are conventionally uh, we're sort of than what's the conventional norm. But then um, we need to, as people who are within that sector, banks, fintechs, and telcos, mm. they've got to be a way to think through how do we approach this, you know, from a product design perspective in a way that people will find them, will feel included in the whole mm. process. And, but also still room for improvement. Room for improvement is always that. And um, there are lots of great initiatives um, that are going around. Is, uh, one of them is Ejo Heza, okay. which is uh, really, they thought through, it's one of, it's really great. Now the challenge they're having now is distribution channels yeah. now. And we think to some extent, we hope, we're, we're planning, hopefully we'll also you know, ship in in one or the other. So it's, it's distribution channels. Um, they also, they're also leveraging USSD, mm. and it seems people are picking it all up. But then we also need banks to step in, provide products, you know, mm. savings products that are pretty much, you know, um, that are pretty much sort of, I don't know, functional and realistic to these people. Yeah. And yeah, but so far as we still have a long way to go. And that's why we fintech, I feel like we can build those bridges between the formal and the informal. Yeah. And one of the, the analogy I like to use is in Rwanda we have 12 million people, right? And of those probably less than 2 million have active bank accounts. Mm. But then we have over 9 million with mobile phones. Yes. So I always think that should be an asset we can use as you know players within the ecosystem mm. why do you have to force me to come physically to your branch yeah. when i have a phone you could use you can integrate with nerda you can you know get all those kyc data mm. i'm not telling i'm not asking you to give me a loan of 100 million no start start very small mm. at least allow me in first <laughs> before yeah. you you deny me anything allow me in first i come in and then from there, we build gradually. So, so, yeah, that's what we've been doing, and yeah, so far. Interesting insights. Yeah, yeah. That's that's amazing. Yeah. And my follow-up question will be: um, As a business leader, mm -hmm. you've been um, running uh, the company for the last six, seven years now. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you've learned through along the journey, running your company and building your your business that you had no clue back then when you started? Um, well, now I one thing I learned is that the idea in itself is not enough. Mm. Yeah, having a great idea is, is not enough. Yeah, so that's one. Second, um, well, that I knew, but I felt like for me, looking at my personality, I didn't think that would be an issue to me. Um, mm. Some sense of loneliness. You know, because depending at which level, growth level you're at, you've got to really commit a, too much of your time to your business. So some social activities, they sort of, you know, die along the way. Yeah. So there's that. Um, another thing is uh, being, um, dealing with people, managing people. So as a startup, you have limited resources. Mm. So you're trying to hire people that are being uh, approached by big companies with big yeah. budgets. So how do you do that? You know, how do you sell your vision? You know, and 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 then you know, from an idea selling it to people, be it yeah. your teammates or your investors. So dealing with people and making compromises along the way. So I would say those are the three things I've learned um, that the idea is not enough. Yeah. Um, second, that there's going to be some sacrifice along the way. Yeah. Part of them being, you know, cutting down on, you know, maybe social life, all that kind of stuff. Mm. And, and uh, three is knowing how to deal with people, to handle people and be ready to make some compromises whenever necessary. Okay. You know, because then in that sense, in some cases you realize um, somebody pisses you off. But then they are benefiting the business, so yeah. you've got to choose. Yeah. Do I choose my personal feelings over the advancement of the business mm. or the other way around? So sometimes it's like, okay, let me just take it in, <laughs> you know? For the benefit. For the benefit of the business, business. exactly. So, so you, you learn how to juggle to sort of 
balance that. But also, you don't, you're not just going to allow anyone to step on you. Yeah? yeah. But does, does that balance you've got to put in between? And yeah. yeah. So those that would be the three highlights you know, okay. of my journey. Yeah. Wonderful. Let's spin the wheel for another round of questions. We're okay. Eight, ten. What's going to be your next Let's number? See. I hope I hope it's still going up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. it's can it can still go back. We never know. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see there. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Uh, eight. <laughs> We're back again. to eight. We're back to eight. Yeah. yeah. This is so fun. Interesting. <laughs> Let's see. Next lucky number, please go up. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oh, yeah. Oops. Oh, no, 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 no. Down, <laughs> down, down. Oh, five. now we went down. Five. Wonderful. Um, you got five. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to know, you, you lead uh, more than 20 staff um, mm -hmm. at your workplace. And how would you define leadership? Whew. I think I still have a lot to learn when it comes to that topic. Mm. Um, one thing I've been trying to, one thing I've been trying to exercise, as far as I'm concerned, is um, exercising empathy. Mm. So empathy across teammates and trying to understand, listen to them. Mm. So that's one. Second is trust. You know, trusting your teammates to mm. deliver on some of these things. Because you you don't you don't want to be a polis like a polis man in your company, so you've got to be able to trust them and then um, allow them to make mistakes, and so that's part of the trust process. And um, the third um, the third uh, thing uh, I would say that we've been practicing is as a startup, which I feel like any any startup needs to do that, celebrating the small wins. Yeah, that's very key. That's very key because um, in a startup is like a roller coaster, mm. so everything is a priority every day. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, and you've got for some reasons for you know what you've got to make sure you keep up you know the pace. Mm. So yeah, and the moment you make you you, you make those small progresses or yeah. you celebrate them with the team, and mm. then they know that yeah maybe we're targeting. Um, one million users, but at least today we have 45 plus thousand, you know, that's something, mm -hmm. you know, because before that we were below 10,000. Yeah. So you celebrate those things mm -hmm. and set by celebrating small wins doesn't mean you get complacent with where you at in terms mm -hmm. of progress, but then you, you acknowledge that today there's this progress, but tomorrow there's, there's another achievement yeah, yeah. I've got to aim for. So those are three things as far as leadership, but again, I'm not an expert in that field. Because, yeah. yeah, so that's what I've been trying yeah, to practice so far. I mean, I don't know, maybe we should ask my staff, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my colleague to tell if I've been doing a good job, because I can't rate myself on the other end, but yeah. But yeah, but but mm -hmm. uh, as, again, as as a leader, it's it's mm -hmm. a work in progress. Mm -hmm. You you learn through along the journey. It's mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you don't wake up one day and become a great leader. You you practice um, the, um, mm -hmm. the empathy, as mm -hmm. as you said. Mm -hmm. You you practice um, mm -hmm. uh, giving and receiving feedback mm -hmm. every day, and you create a culture where people comes to you and. Um, you set up, you set goals together. You celebrate some of those successes together, and it's um, those things. Um, mm -hmm. They pick up inside you. They become parts of the company, um, corporate culture, and it evolves over time as mm -hmm. the company is, is growing. And there are some of there. There is no experts, <laughs> as, as as you said, because mm -hmm. it's, it's also gradually um, progress over time. Even yep. for for big organization, even for bigger company, they start also from somewhere, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. Wonderful. And uh, my follow-up question um, will be, um, what do you think has contributed to your success? And by here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some statistics, some, some numbers. Mm. Um, since 2014, let's say um, you've been running your company since 2014, mm -hmm. and from Jan to October 2020, the cumulative saving um, that you guys generated, I got this number, I think, from your websites, um, mm. We're closer to um, 
um, 85 million and the cumulative loans closer to 53 million. And you recently signed a partnership with um, Access Bank. Mm -hmm. Numbers um, seem to be on the right path and mm -hmm. you're pretty on the right um, uh, trajectory um, and um, on the right path uh, for your growth. Mm -hmm. What do you think has contributed to your success? Um, teamwork, mm. yeah, teamwork has been key, and, and but also you know working with passion, like passionate people, mm. people that really that have passion for what they're doing, mostly young people, and you'd be shocked that most of uh, most of the people that I work with, most of them didn't have like really extensive experience. Mm. There are some of those people that were really uh, motivated by what they're doing and then open, eager to learn, you know, every single day. Yeah. So working together as a team has been instrumental to achieve some of these mm. things. And um, another thing is the vision, um, yeah. trying to, um, to share the vision and then have my teammates, you know, participate or contribute towards that. So, so, so those are the things that, 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 that has really, does really um, contribute towards that um, mm. teamwork, but also, um, but also the, uh, the vision. So not just knowing the vision yeah, at the yeah. top, but making sure it trickles down to everybody. The understanding that they connect with it, because mm. they've got to connect with it. Mm. And there's this question I ask my, my people almost, um, most of the times is, what do you think when you wake up? Mm. Like every time you wake up, you're coming here, do you feel excited? Yeah. You know, is it something that, you know, wakes you up in the morning and mm -hmm. then, so if it's not, I'd be happy to even recommend you some other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you feel like there's that excitement, mm -hmm. you're really loving it, then this is it. Mm -hmm. So let's just get it done. So those are the things I would say that um, I contribute to, but also, you know, continued or progressive learning, because we have to learn and, and personal as well as collective growth because we need to learn to improve to because um, challenges of yesterday are not challenges of today mm. so you've got to be able to update and then create an environment whereby people learn and challenge themselves and, and then um, yeah so I'd say those are the things that have been key to uh, at least us trying to achieve some of these numbers. Wonderful. Yes. And let me wrap up this conversation with my last question. Mm -hmm. um, you talked um, about um, your team and the purpose of your team and I'd like to know what's your purpose in life apart from other than making money what's your purpose <laughs> in life what drives you why um, what push you to do the things that you do um, for me I'd say two things two things are very dear to me um, is impact and so human and capital growth mm. so they're both together so even if you look at what we do there's both um, capital mm. um, growth and human growth. So it's, because for me, I think both have got to grow, to yeah. go hand in hand. So you can't just focus on money. <laughs> yeah. And because whatever it is we're doing, we're doing for people. Yeah. So we've got to be able to see growth, you know, for those people that we're trying to serve and provide service. We just not them minding about our own business or our margins. <laughs> But we try also to sort of create that sort of um, balance. Mm. So for me, professionally speaking, um, that's it. Um, human and capital growth. Uh, and for me, all the business that I get involved in is pretty much those two things. And I, I believe um, I'm creating the needed impact mm. as, as well as creating that sort of, you know, capital growth beat for our users, for yeah. my shareholders, and for my family, because we also need to grow financially. So those are, are the things that I think professionally are really key for me. Wonderful. And um, we are coming to the end of this conversation, yeah. and my guest was uh, Steve Schema, who is the CEO and founder of Exus Limited. Thanks a lot for making it to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Okay. The conversation continues on social media using the hashtag 60xbusiness. Remember to tag me. My handle is at Christian Kitumaini. Till next time, remember to wear your mask, be safe, and I see you down the road.